Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the big convening uh, for January 9th, this fine Monday. We're very pleased to have all of you here. Um, what I'm going to do is open up uh, with a little bit of housekeeping uh, and do a few framing thoughts, and I'll introduce our session for today. Um, so let me uh, start up my screen here and I'll run through uh, a couple of uh, housekeeping items, a couple of thoughts, uh, and then pass it along to our session. So uh, let me start uh, just again, this is the uh, big convening on open publishing uh, and open scholarship in the Big Ten, a perspective from faculty, authors, and researchers. Um, what I'd like to do uh, just briefly, uh, give a little bit of housekeeping for this morning. Uh, if you need technical support, please contact library.support at btaa.org. Uh, the session is fully captioned for those of you who would like a live transcript. Uh, you can turn this on or off by clicking on the live caption icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we are recording today. Uh, we're gonna have two panels going simultaneously. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but we're recording uh, both of those and um, we'll uh, post those recordings afterward so that uh, you can uh, participate, uh, see both of them, pass them along to your colleagues and so forth. Uh, importantly, I wanna say that the BTA library community welcomes the contributions of all of our colleagues and is respectful of and opening, open to differing opinions, viewpoints, experiences, and backgrounds. Please be respectful of our community's diversity and generous of other people's views. Uh, finally, if you're posting to social media, please use the hashtag big convenings. Uh, we are going to have two, fac two parallel faculty panels this morning, um, as I mentioned. Um, I do want to uh, welcome everybody. I'll talk a little bit about um, what we're doing in each of those and, and where they are. Uh, the social sciences and sciences panel will stay in the current Zoom room and the arts and pan, uh, humanities panel uh, will be in a parallel Zoom room and we'll give the link to that. So you can, uh, those of you who wish to join the arts and humanities panel can go and join that. Uh, on behalf of the directors of our 15 libraries, I wanna extend a warm welcome to each of you and thank you for joining us today. We're very excited to be uh, back and to continue our sequence of convenings toward the big collection. Uh, we took a brief hiatus in the fall, but we're back again to kick things off, uh, kick off our 2023 bi-monthly series. And today we have an exciting session on open publishing. Uh, the purpose of the convenings is to develop a sustained community conversation about the great task before us, building a knowledge commons for the Big Ten Academic Alliance. Today, we continue the sequence with a conversation about open publishing and open scholarship in the Big Ten, a perspective from faculty, authors, and researchers. The libraries of the Big Ten Academic Alliance are engaged partners in advancing the growth of more equitable open science and open scholarship by helping to shape a sustainable, scalable, trustworthy, and just open knowledge ecosystem. Throughout the week, faculty from across big institutions will speak to their perspective on the value of open access publishing to their work, its current state, and prospects for the future. We have 10 faculty, uh, or eight faculty, and two of our library deans joining us this morning uh, to engage in these panel discussions. Uh, again, the, the two parallel panels this morning, one on open publishing within the humanities, one on the sciences and social sciences. Uh, you'll be able to choose which one you'd like to attend. Uh, again, we're gonna record both sessions so that you can view the other session later at your convenience. Uh, I'm going to provide now uh, some opening thoughts to frame our discussion before introducing our presenters. I want to talk a little bit about what uh, open publishing in the Big Ten looks like. And this is an arc of over 20 years uh, of, of increasingly advancing open publishing. And these are the numbers at a high level. Uh, over those 20 years, about 1.6 million, over 1.6 million publications. Uh, this is from 2000 to 2020. Um, that's about 100,000 publications annually. Over 50% of those today are made open every year. Uh, we can see in the data that open publications are cited usually three times or more uh, than closed 
publications, those uh, published through closed or commercial channels. Uh, and yet still only 18% of our publications in the Big Ten are open at the time of publication. Uh, they make their way towards open later on, only about 18% open immediately when they're published. So we have a lot to do. There's a lot of progress to, that can be made. Another picture, uh, this picture changes a little bit when we look across the disciplines. Um, <clears throat> so this again is across Big Ten universities. This is open access by discipline, 2000 to 2020. Uh, you can see the total number of publications on the left side there and the fields, uh, uh, various fields across the bottom. Uh, you can see those very high levels of adoption uh, for open access in medicine, biology, psychology, chemistry, computer science, material science, physics, et cetera. Uh, and it becomes much lower when we get to the under, other end of the scale, when we're in art, philosophy, history, geography. Um, so there's really a varying uh, adoption across the disciplines. And while the big numbers at the high level look pretty good, it's over half is open, uh, it really takes on a very different character when we look into uh, the disciplines. And that's very much why we have these two different uh, perspectives this morning, the, the social sciences and sciences panel and the arts and humanities panel, because it is a different picture and it's a different approach uh, in those sort of major, you know, uh, uh, groupings. Um, I want to show you a different picture um, and this open access uh, in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is really part of a global movement toward open publishing in the academy. Um, and what I'm showing in the visualization here is about 20 years of progress uh, toward open publishing. Uh, you can see the regions up here. We're looking at global output uh, from Europe, Asia, North America in the blue, Oceania in the red, uh, Africa in the pink, Latin America in the brown. And you can see the big 10 universities here uh, in black. So I'll play this one more time. And what you're going to see is open access starting back in 2000. And it's very low at the end of the scale. There's very little open access. And then you'll see that move through two decades uh, in increasing open access. Total green OA is uh, uh, open access that's in um, university uh, repositories that are made open by authors. Uh, gold open access is gold at the time of publication, gold hosted by publishers. So I'll play this one more time. Um, and you can really see this advance, this steady advance, particularly after 2010 uh, and the global rise of open access across uh, the regions of the globe. Um, what we do matter, right? What we do as the Big Ten we register as a player on the global scale, uh, and we really are leaders in this space, and what we do really moves the needle. Um, so what are the Big Ten libraries doing with open publishing? There's five really important things to keep in mind that we're working on uh, from the libraries. Pursuing a multifaceted open scholarship strategy, uh, and you'll see things in there. There are really seven strategies. These are four of the key ones. Balancing the journal marketplace, opening the scholarly monograph, strengthening academy-owned infrastructure, and elevating marginalized and unheard voices. Uh, we're opening content with commercial publishers, so making things immediately open and available to the public, authors keeping their rights, no fees, no caps, and no limits uh, in publishers like PLOS, Cambridge University Press, Wiley, and the Institute of Physics. Uh, supporting also alternative publishing business models, alternatives to the commercial avenues, uh, diamond open access, for example, and other types of journals with no fee models, uh, particularly through the uh, open access program uh, hosted by Lyricists for smaller uh, diamond journals. Uh, we're also developing and hosting open publishing platforms, the development of platforms like Fulcrum at the University of Michigan and Manifold at the University of Minnesota. And we're also supporting global development of, of open infrastructure. And you'll see some of just a few of the organizations we support there, uh, the Open Library of Humanities, the Directory of Open Access Journals, the Directory of Open Access Books, uh, the Open Access Switchboard, and Koki, the Cur Curtain Open Knowledge Initiative. Uh, the numbers that I was showing previously in the graphics, by the way, uh, come to us by way of our partnership with the Koki project. Um, so uh, what I want to do here and, and say, where are we going, right? From where we've been to where we are today to where we're going. And this is the guiding star for the libraries of the Big Ten. 
in order to advance a just, trustworthy, scalable, and sustainable open knowledge ecosystem, make open, more equitable scholarship our lead purpose. Uh, in the libraries, we're doing a lot. Um, we do a lot of supporting, advocating, advancing. The faculty really lead in this space. It is the publishing of faculty research, faculty work. Um, we can often get our heads down. We're working so hard on behalf of our faculty. Today, we sort of lift our heads. We've convened two panels to pause and bring faculty voices into the room. Um, so with that, uh, I want to uh, just invite you that our two panels are the social sciences and sciences panel. Please stay in this Zoom room. Uh, Beth McNeil, Dean of Libraries at Purdue University is the moderator for that. Uh, and we'll introduce uh, our uh, expert faculty uh, as we go into that session. Uh, the arts and penalty, uh, arts and humanities panel, excuse me, uh, please leave this leave this room and join the parallel Zoom that's already in progress. They're there waiting for you. Uh, that is moderated by Claire Stewart, the Dean of Li University Libraries and uh, at uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Uh, the link to join the arts and humanities panel, uh, you'll find that in the chat uh, right now and also over in the Q&A. Uh, you can um, click on that. Uh, you'll see the link there. We're going to pause for just a couple of minutes uh, so that those who wish to join the Arts and Humanities panel can uh, go and do that. Uh, and we'll resume here in just a moment. And we've let the uh, Arts and Humanities panel know uh, the Department of Psychology at the University of Maryland. Uh, Sylvie Bruder is Professor of Agronomy and at uh, Purdue University. Brian Karstens uh, is the Chair uh, of the Department of Evolution, Ecology, and Organismal Biology at The Ohio State University. And uh, Moin Syed, the Professor uh, in the Department of Psychology at the University of Minnesota. And in the Arts and Humanities panel, again, uh, Claire Stewart moderating, uh, Harmony Bench from The Ohio State University, Ali Brewer from the University of Maryland, uh, TJ Ballard from Northwestern University, and Josephine Lee from the University of Minnesota. Uh, 